Now on to priority three. Attack the net whenever possible. Two things on this tennis court make you a strong doubles player. One, of course, is your ability with the racket. You want a good partner with a good racket skills. But also, your position relative to the net when you get the shot determines a great deal of your power also. Let me show you the three areas of the court and their advantages and disadvantages. Lauren and I are going to stay at the baseline. The advantages are we're going to have a lot of time, the shots aren't that hard, but the disadvantages, but how do we win the point? Okay, we can go on and on and on. The disadvantages are we just have to depend on them to make a mistake. I want a more aggressive point of view. I want us to attack and win as much as possible. So, Lauren, let's move into the second part of the court around the service line, normally called no man's land. I don't call it no man's land. I just call it the hardest place to play tennis. You've got to have a lot of racket skills because you've got these half volleys, you've got the long volleys. It's a very difficult place to play, and you better be really good. Well, why be here at all? Well, you got, if a high ball comes, at least you've got some angles to work with. You've got a, an easy shot cross court, but what are the disadvantages? The ball's low, you've got to hit up. Should you ever be here? Of course, coming in, in to attack, backing up to defend, sometimes you've got to be here, but try to leave whatever you can. Let's show you the difficulty of this position. Okay, we finally got an opening, but it takes a lot of skill. You see, Lauren and I have to have a certain amount of skill to play this. Let's take away all of this worry. Let's move up to the net. I call this the power position, because take a look. How much skill do you need to take and hit a ball over the net from here? Very little. The court, because of the angles that we've now created, because we're so close, are huge. There's no way our opponents can cover it all. So once we get into the power position, you don't want to hit it to us. Let's see why. Oh, look how easy this is. Oh, no chance. No chance. Okay. It's just too easy. We feel embarrassed. Whenever you can, get to that power position. It takes the least amount of skill. This is a strong portion. Now, let me show you exactly what I mean about how strong this really is. To demonstrate the ability of this position and how powerful it is, Skeeter and I are relatively the same ability with the racket. But with him at the baseline and me in the power position, look what I can do to compete with him if I get my shot at the ball. All right, Skeeter. All right, well, Skeeter. He cannot compete with me, even though his skill is as good as mine, because I have better position on the court. It's easy to put the ball away. Now let's see what happens if I reduce my skill level. I'm going to put the racket in the left hand, which really reduces my ability to play tennis. But my position on the court enhances my ability to play. So let's see if I can compete with Skeeter at a 2-5 level and Skeeter is a 6-0 level. Oh, well, the technique isn't really good, but I'm not real good with it anyway. But you can see because of my position on the net, I can handle any shot he hits because it takes very little skill. So if you want to increase your potential as a doubles player, whenever possible, get to the power position. It's your best chance for success and it makes your uh, opponents miserable.